Hi, my name is David Witt. I, I live in uh, St. Louis City on the west side. Um, I've been involved with a, gr uh, a group called uh, Cop Watch, where we go around and we uh, film the police and we also educate people on how to document police activity and more importantly, how to conduct themselves when you're engaging with police. So like uh, we, we hold uh, Know Your Rights trainings where we, uh, like uh, sometimes the trainings may be something basic, they, just just educating people about their rights because people don't know their rights and they might think they know. So in a situation when you get stopped by the police, it's good to know what your rights are. Like a cop asking you for like, where you going or let me get some identification. It's good to ask the cop like, you know, why am I being stopped? You know what I'm saying? You can ask some questions. So we just teach people the way to conduct themselves dealing with cops. Then in the case when your rights are violated, you have the evidence because you're recording the, the importance of evidence. So uh, we, we, we try to make sure people understand that these cameras are still, you know, useful if we're using it correctly and we're doing things properly. put a lot of my time and uh, effort into right now, and that's something called uh, first responding, right? And so what first responders, uh, we, we normally, um, you know, look at first responders as like, you know, the fire department or the police department or, or, or ambulance, right? But actually the first responders are the people that live right in that community. Those are the actual first responders to a scene of anything. And so in conjunction with filming the police, this is talking about gathering evidence after a, a police murder. Of a, or, or excuse me, a police shooting, okay? So what what uh, we need to do is, is, you know what I'm saying, we need to start investigating these police shootings. And we can only do that as a as a community, as a, as a whole. And so first responders, what it does is create a network of, of you know, regular residents or, you know, people in the streets that's out there. We're the first responders, you know what I'm saying? We, we need a system where we can protect the person that has video so that it don't get in the wrong hands. You know, um, the video should be able to, be, uh, you know, to, to be accessible to like the family or somebody important. And, and, and that's, and that's where any kind of stop, you know, and I've, I've, I've been spending a lot of time on trying to get people to focus on you know, what are we doing with this video? A lot of people do this video stuff all the time and they post it on the internet and it's like, it's not, it don't always get to the, the victim that can, that can best benefit from this, you know, video that's being shown. You know, and, and also the fact that once we start showing this video, then the police have an opportunity to, you know, use this evidence to help them. Let me give an example where it didn't work for the police. Uh, Walter Scott was shot in his back in, in North in North Charleston. Uh, this guy named Fetus Santana had took the picture, okay? He held the video. He didn't post it on social media nowhere for like three days. The police came forth and gave an official statement, okay? And, and where the police had said, uh, the police said that, uh, you know, they said something like the, the cop was justified, his taser was taken, it was a whole story. The video came out three days later and it, it went right against what they showed, showed the police officer was a liar. You know what I'm saying? They locked the dude up, charged him first degree murder. Long story short, this cop got 20 years, okay? Now, the good thing about all of this is that video was, was taken and we gotta start you know, thinking about all of these police shootings and what was done good and what was done wrong. How did this cop get out, you know, get away? We as a community, we're not, we're not you know, supporting each other, we're, we're not, you know, Ramsey's in jail right now. A lot of people didn't support him. You know, a lot of people that's eyewitnesses get, you know, uh, uh, um, get attacked. Dorian Johnson was with Mike Brown. He's still alive, you know what I'm saying? He's still probably living in Phil right now. I know him, that's a good brother of mine because I was living in Canfield when all that stuff took place. But the, the thing is, is what the First Responders Network uh, does is it also creates a network so that we can protect each other better. You know what I'm saying? Stay in contact with each other because once you out here start doing this, trying to fix our neighborhood up, trying to educate our people, we got to be protected. And, and, and the best way to protect each other is call a brother up, call a sister up, see how they doing, you know what I'm saying? And, and then we can get, you know what I'm saying, we can create a safer environment to fight back against our, our oppressors. This uh, building right here. Can y'all give me 15, 20 minutes? I'll be right back with some legal paperwork for you. Man, this this building right here, they just told my wife they gotta go 
down the street to Del Mar now to get services that they used to provide right here. She can't even go in here no more because she was supposed to get her like her little bus uh, tickets and stuff like this. They talking about they don't even do that out this building no more. We gotta go down to Del Mar. I guess they got a new building or a new location, but the hood right here, you know. But it, it see, but I'm me and my wife. See, my 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 wife still believes like she still needs these you know programs because we don't have any any option you know what i'm saying and so that's a problem too like we our, our people don't got no options and no choices it's like take this or don't take nothing and that's and that's a real fucked up position to have our people in but you know what i'm saying like they sending my wife all the way down the street like this this was convenient you know what i'm saying like you know what I'm saying? The folks did the same thing in Ferguson when they was out there for a minute. You know what I'm saying? They they, they uh, took the women that was actually helping our community up out of there. You know what I'm saying? They stopped giving them the resources at one point. Like at the beginning, it looked real good. The daggone cabinets was full. But see, that's what happened when you put all your money into just giving people handouts. You're going to you're gonna have to always keep giving niggas handouts. But if you give people a skill, once these young boys get up in here and start gutting out these buildings and seeing a building get built, I guarantee you, man, they never they would want to start doing that, man. That's that's a, this is that that's inspiring. You take an old decrepit building like this, you get some young boys up in there, tear that thing down, show them how to put some sheetrock on a wall, insulate a wall, run some electric, put some piping up in there. I'm telling you, man, they would want to do that. That's what happened to me, and I, I'm not. That's why. I'm not saying this because, you know what I'm saying, like, I'm, I'm not saying this, I'm saying this because this will happen to me. I'm an electrician, you know what I'm saying? This dude pulled me off the corner. I used to slang at this joint called Mott's Mini Mart in, 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 uh, in, in, uh, in, in uh, Suitland, Maryland, okay? I stand out there slanging drugs right out front of the store, right? He came out there, he said, brother, you want to make some real money? And he started explaining to me about electrical, you know what I'm saying? He gave me a job, long story short. I went to work for that dude, man. I, I I never sold no drugs after that. You know what I'm saying? I had been tempted, but it's too easy to make this money off this electrical. But see, once you get those skills, then you face them with a whole different monster. And see, we ain't even ready to address that monster because we still get discriminated on job sites. You know what I'm saying? And, and part of the reason because if there's not enough of us in those jobs, you know, and then you got the token black man that just want to keep his job, then he not even going to try to, you know what I'm saying, help each other out. We got to get past that. But I just want to say, yeah, if we were to take these buildings, got these buildings out, there's money for that. You know what I'm saying? We can easily organize these young brothers out here, but they don't want to do that because they already, they, they're going to say, oh, black folks don't want to work. We got all these excuses. They be saying that, man. Man, black folks ain't no lazier than no white person, no Asian person, no Hispanic, whoever, man. People is lazy and, and people work. It's the same, you know what I'm saying? So I, I'm tired of hearing people. That's why I don't like this stop the violence because white people kill white people, black people kill black people, Hispanics kill Hispanics. I'm tired of hearing that. You don't see none of them talking about none of that stuff, but it's always black people. We got to stop the violence.